I do want to thank everyone uh, for your civility tonight and arguing your points. Uh, it's a very passionate subject, all, and thank you all uh, for your conduct tonight. We're going to close the public hearing, and then the board's going to decide uh, on the matter. Mr. Lente, do you have a staff summary or any uh, clarifying points? Okay, I'll open it up to the board. Mr. Justice. Are coming up? No, I don't. I, I was going to ask the questions if you had any, okay. but I'm fine. Okay. Commissioner Justice, do you have approval? Is there a second? Second. Questions or comments? Any more comments, Commissioner Justice? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I scribbled notes all throughout your comments, so it'll be a little disjointed, so I apologize for that. But first, Mr. Valenti uh, has been uh, bandied around pretty good tonight of why he was doing something. He did it because this commission asked him to do it. That's why he did it. The notice, the article, August 5th, August 6th in the Tampa Tribune, St. Pete Times, Fox 13, Channel 10, August 5th, August 7th, Fox 13. It's been out there. Um, I don't want to echo the chairman's thoughts about the civility and uh, those that had concerns and questions about the implementation. I, I understand and I empathize. Uh, you can't discriminate, or you can't legislate against discrimination. Well, yeah, you can. You can, you can legislate against discrimination. You may not be able to legislate against the discrimination in people's minds or hearts, but we can set policy for our community that says that we are not going to discriminate against people. We're not going to discriminate against a group of people, whether it's 2%, 20%, 40%. I think that I keep going back to the pastor we had at our invocation last time who prayed that we would in the duties of our commission, look out for the rights of others more than you look out for the rights of yourself. I think that's what we're doing here tonight. We are looking out for the rights of our entire community. People reference government documents about life, liberty, and, and the pursuit of happiness. That is the American way. And that is the Pinellas way tonight. And, and Mr. Chairman, um, I've been in office a long time. Not in this office. I don't know if you consider that I've been here too long. But uh, I think Mr. Case thinks all of us have been here too long. But uh, people talk about the religious faith and their beliefs. And a lot of us don't talk about our faith in public life. But it is that faith that gives me my moral compass of where I make my decisions and how we treat each other. It is that faith that is a rock that I stand upon and that I'll stand upon voting in favor of this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Justice. Commissioner Lovell. Thank you, and that was very eloquent, Commissioner Justice. Thank you. I think before we get to get to this or actually take a vote, I would like to have Mr. Valenti explain in very plain English, not legal ease, um, the three things that are covered by this ordinance. This whole conversation has been about the use of public restrooms. And that is so far from what this ordinance is about. No, it's actually about the and it's Please, ma'am, please don't yell out. Mr. Valente. Please. Please. Very basic language. What our human rights ordinance does, the three areas that it covers, and what they need. It protects people from discard. Human rights ordinance protects people in three spheres of life, integral spheres of their lives: in their employment, in employment opportunities, in housing, in housing opportunities, and in places of public accommodation, in places generally open to the public for commerce. And what this ordinance would do is add a group, which it does with not other mean groups. Public restrooms. Pardon me. It does not mean public restrooms. I want to be clear on I want to be clear Commissioner it relates to places of public accommodations some places of public accommodations by their nature have restroom facilities associated or affiliated with them restaurants so to the extent that they're brought in through or as a place of public accommodation then of course they're implied but I guess the point is 
you asked for the scope of coverage. It's in integral phases or spheres of people's lives, employment and housing, the places of public accommodation, and it adds a group that won't be discriminated against in accessing those three spheres of life, just like the current protections extend to persons based on race, color, religion, national origin, as the board has seen fit, sexual orientation, age and employment, disability in all phases. Thank you, Commissioner Bala. I'm going to ask you again. We've listened for three hours. Please don't yell out. We've heard everything y'all have had to say. Other comments from the board, Commissioner Long? Yes, I'll make my comments um, very brief. We have heard an awful lot of testimony this evening about faith and about Christianity and about God and doing what's right. And I want to, I've had in ton of email from people that said, started off by saying things like, if you had children, you wouldn't blah, blah, blah. Well, I do have children, and I have grandchildren from the age of 15 down to three. And um, I don't believe that it makes good public policy when you make your decisions based on fear. We are all human beings in the eyes of God. And um, one thing I didn't hear much about is that in our school system, from the time I was a very little girl, we said the Pledge of Allegiance, which guaranteed um, freedom, liberty, and justice for all. So I commend Commissioner Justice for the comments that he made because I feel that my faith also gives me the foundation and the moral compass from which I make all of my decisions as a public official. And for those reasons, and what I've also just spoken to, I absolutely am very proud to support this ordinance tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Other comments from the board? Commissioner Roach.
That's deterrent. That works. And our staff does a good job in that here. I don't think transgender people, and I'll be honest with you, I don't understand all. I don't understand. Because the phases keep changing to me. That's not the front. It's, it's an honest admission of ignorance, because I just can, have not been able to grasp what it is. Transgender, as my research has shown, is a transition of gender, an evolution in and of itself, and I don't know how anybody can define something that is an evolutionary process. If we were to add, and, and, and perhaps if this is worthy of consideration, to not change any words in our current human rights ordinance, to add the transgender term, which was originally the act, not all this other stuff, and do not change definitions of anything else, then we allow the Human Rights Ordinance Office to do its job and investigate, this is why I asked that question earlier, and find out whether or not an act of discrimination actually took place and then take it to the court of law, as I had considerable conversations with staff on and, and counsel, and allow case law to define what this is, not seven politicians some of which are up for re-election. And if you don't think that's going to impact this, then you're being naive. You are. And by the very, very nature of human rights, and that I respect your difference, your reason to support this, you are beholding to respect mine to oppose it. Not use words like hatred, bigotry. I haven't heard any of that tonight. I've heard I don't agree with it. I don't like it. I don't believe in it. I didn't see anybody turn to anyone in here and, and hurl and insult at them. A derogatory term of no sense whatsoever. But I've, but I've heard the reverse. And that disturbs me. Especially where it was. The irony of it. <laughs> we as human beings, in my opinion, can expect tolerance. We as legislators, policy makers, can legislate tolerance. We cannot, as human beings, expect or legislate acceptance based on what is in someone's soul. We can't. It's ignorant. It's ignorant to even suggest that we and this body, the gentleman said it earlier, I have absolutely no authority to give you or take a right away from you. None. I'm not above you. I'm not below you either. And I don't have that authority to give you a right or take it from you. It's whoever our creator is in our constitution. Our constitution doesn't give anything, any rights, by the way. It'll win you a tremendous bet somewhere. And, and you'll be surprised when many people will think the constitution gives you rights. It doesn't. It protects your rights. It's already there. And I don't think it is our role to redefine a word and a term. If this was simple, I think it had been done. And I'm saddened that it ain't. I'm, I'm disappointed that it wasn't put forward as the ask, which was to add transgender, or whatever that is, and allow the Human Rights Office and case law to define what that means to the world, not seven folks sitting in Dallas County. This, to me, is very analogous. And this is important for me and why. why one of the main reasons I'm opposed to this is because I don't believe it belongs in this house. This is a state issue, this is a federal issue, it's very much like the domestic partner registry because if we do it here in this county and an individual becomes comfortable with using the bathroom situation, you can say it isn't, but it's all in there. It's in there. It's an issue. And they get comfortable doing it. Then they go into one of these other counties because that's what they're comfortable doing and walk into their bathroom where they're not protected and they end up in jail and law. What have we done? If it is truly rights for all, everyone's equal, everywhere, then why are there exceptions? You know? It's not you're, you're right, you're equal here, except for here, except for there, except for here. If it is, then push this where it belongs. That's at the state level to mandate it statewide. Have the courage to put it on our delegation, just like the domestic partner registry option I offered. Or even better, at a federal level, and fight that cause there. Not in a local city or town, where you can take 10 feet steps that way and be in violation 
of someone else's law. If this was simply adding transgender to, as a listed, which was the request from the very beginning of this, as one of the listed protected classes, you would have my full support. This goes too far. And because it goes too far, and I have no authority to determine what is in your heart or what is in your soul or expression. I was I get I get yelling because I don't wear a tie. <laughs> now I'm told it was it's because I'm radical or something. No, it's because of the skin disease I have <clears throat> called acne vulgaris. The same children ran from me years ago with the scars you see on my face because they were just horrible. I wear an earring, and if I wore it in here, which is a gold hoop with a dangling crucifix, it's gorgeous, which is a expression of my faith, I would get massacred in the media by it. So before we start demanding equality, we better understand what it is, and it's for everyone everywhere. And I'm for that, but not, not for selective equality, for only certain people in certain ways. If we are truly leaders with courage, then we demand it across the board everywhere. And that's mine. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Y'all are doing great tonight. We're almost wrapped up. Um, let me say that I am going to support uh, this amendment for a number of reasons. Um, first, let's clarify. We've heard a lot about pedophilia and voyeurism and uh, inappropriate touching. That will continue to be illegal. Uh, this does not make that legal. Um, Commissioner Lotvala talked about what this is really about. Employment protections, housing, and public accommodation. And I think we've, uh, the fears that we're hearing about restroom use, I mean, that's what most of the folks here have talked about. Um, I don't know if any of you have actually talked to a transgender person. Uh, that was a new experience for me, Commissioner Roach. You hadn't done that. I have. Um, but we had an issue with St. Farley, and, and the sheriff had to deal with it. And I guess my point is, we all come from different places. And it's our responsibility not just to protect the rights of the majority, but also of the minority. There are transgender people in our community. There are gay and lesbian people in our community. And we are elected to serve all of the people in our community and do it in a way that is fair to everyone. And I think this ordinance does that. Why are religious groups uh, not included? It's because we're respecting the tenets of different religions. and not asking them to go against their tenets. Uh, I'm a Christian as well, Pentecostal Christian. And I can tell you when I voted for the uh, inclusion of sexual orientation, I heard from folks telling me I'm going to hell. But you know what? Uh, there are gay and lesbian folks in churches all across this country. And should they be denied the right to work or to live? Uh, one thing I did not hear about was the issue, and I don't know if it's the right term, but hermaphrodites, intersex folks. There are folks who are born with both sets of organs, male and female. And someone makes a decision for them, a parent, who's go probably going through the most difficult time of their lives of assigning a gender to that child. And what if years later that child says, parents picked the wrong gender? And then they have to go through this process. There are folks like that in our community. And are we just supposed to turn a blind eye and say, well, you're on your own? Uh, my family has a business. We've got one bathroom. And, you know, and so for us, it's one person at a time in there. It's not an issue. Um, I'd be interested to know, since Tampa does have this, um, does this apply to real jail in the form? Um, I think there are ways for businesses to deal with this. Uh, in Broward, Palm Beach, Monroe County, Leon County, Dunedin, Tampa, Gulfport. We haven't seen the nightmare scenarios that, that folks are predicting here tonight. Um, this is not about pedophilia. Um, excuse me, Commissioner. Um, it's not about 
taking something away from a, a majority, but it's about what we can do that's reasonable to make sure everyone is protected in our community. Um, make sure I got everything covered here. You know, the transgender folks I've talked to are more interested in privacy than anybody when they go into a restroom. Um, and if a, a guy was just wants to throw a wig on and go in the female restroom, this ordinance doesn't allow that. It has to be a bona fide transition. Um, the reason some of the language that Mr. Valente talked about is in here is so folks can't play games like that. And that activity, if it's meant to be voyeuristic or harass the person, is still illegal. And so, you know, we heard some of the same fears uh, back when we had a sexual orientation. None of those came to fruition. Uh, all the other counties and cities that have implemented this have not seen the, the problems that folks here are talking about tonight. Uh, and so I'm going to support this. Commissioner Moroni. Thank you. <clears throat> I too want to thank both sides for their civil mm -hmm. comments, with the exception of the one person who was pretty out of hand, but that's just a normal occurrence here. Um, change is never easy. And our country has had a terrible last hundred years or so as far as discrimination. You will remember that blacks were kept out of bathrooms because they were for whites or blacks. The one lady who stood up here at the very beginning who said that she was born in 1931, I believe, and said that it was 11 years after when women first were allowed to vote. I mean, we still, that is still in that recent memory that women were not allowed to vote. Some folks in this country were not allowed to vote who are allowed to vote now. You have gays who are not allowed to marry, and now they're allowed to marry. This country has gone through a lot of changes. And not that our vote tonight will have anything to do with the country, but it has to do with our county. And the seven of us here really think a lot about when we vote, how it affects all of you. And that's why we have sat here intently listening to both sides. And there's very few of us who ever come here to a public hearing and know how we're going to vote that evening because we want to hear from the public. We, you are the ones who put us here, so we want to listen to you. Are we going to agree with you all the time? No, we're not. Um, I don't agree with my wife all the time. That's 31 years of living with her. And but we life goes on, but we understand and we respect each other's opinions. Um, actually, Commissioner Long, uh, when she spoke, I actually had some of the same things that she said about the Pledge of Allegiance written down on my own notes for tonight, because we start every meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and yes, the last four words of that is injustice for all, and I think this helps us get there. So I will be supporting it too. Thank you, Commissioner Rowan. Any other comments? Commissioner Lapov? Just one uh, follow-up. And all of you have spoken very eloquently, and I won't repeat that. But if, and I'll speak for myself, I would imagine that you feel the same. If we thought for one minute that tomorrow things would be different in our community in terms of the safety of any of us or children or anyone in the community, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be supporting it. And it's, it's not about that. It's about giving that protection to a small group of people who aren't protected today. And it's been a thoughtful, um, we've been talking about this really for a couple of years. It's been a thoughtful conversation. Uh, we appreciate all of you telling us how you feel and what you think. And there are transgender people probably sitting in this room, in this building, um, in our community that didn't cause any problems today. And they're not going to cause any problems in the community tomorrow. And I think this is, uh, I would be supportive of, of their vote. Thank you, Commissioner Oswald. Commissioner Sue? I guess I'm last but not least. But um, thank you all. I um, highly respect each person's opinions. and. Um, thought process. Uh, it's 
I, I have honestly struggled with where I was going to go with this. Um, I go back to uh, what's the purpose and intent of our Pinellas County Code for Human Rights. It's to secure for all individuals within the county the freedom from discrimination because of race, color, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, age, marital status, or disability in connection with employment, and thereby to promote the interests, rights, and privileges of individuals <coughs> within the county. We are adding gender. Now, could you tell me at some point in our history when we had religious wars, when we had discrimina discrimination against certain religions, against race, color, national origin, age, discrimination against seniors, against young people and jobs, marital status, etc. So I think what it, like, we all should, I would hope, live the golden rule, which has been my key in my household, is to treat others as you wish to be treated. If we all did that, then we would be in the best place on earth. And that, to me, is the most important piece of all of this. People tonight said be nice and kind to each other. But we can't legislate that people be nice and kind to each other. But this is one way that there are no preferential treatment, there's no special interest. This is trying to cover all the human beings in this county. And I have to tell you that the one comment that was made was that I think we're all on the journey through going back to the first time of religion and forward or at you know being women or marital status etc etc that we're in a journey of recognizing that many of our lives are dictated by the circumstances of our birth and are dictated thus so um, and so, in conclusion, I will be supporting it. Um, I think that this could also, by its own nature, um, it probably already happens that people go to the bathroom of their choice. And so, this probably will help to promote unisex bathrooms or other alternatives that might actually um, be better for that are the citizens of our county as a whole for their comfort level. So you don't know. But in, in the very end, um, I, I'm done. But I would just ask everyone here, regardless of your backgrounds or belief, to pass on the golden rule and let's, let's live it every day. Very well said, Commissioner. Uh, on that note, I'm going to call for the vote. We have a motion and a second to approve the Human Rights Ordinance Amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes six to one. Thank you all for being here tonight.